Here we're going to do a node voltage analysis with dependent sources. We're given this circuit shown. Here we have node voltage A, node voltage B, node voltage C, node voltage D, and a ground reference of at node E. We also note that at node A that the voltage is Vs1 and that the node voltage is Vs2 as shown here. Now doing this by inspection, we'll do it at node C, we see what devices are connected at node C and we see that it's R1, R2, RP, and RB. So therefore we use conductance. We'll do a KCL at node C. So therefore it's G1 plus G2 plus GB plus GP. That's the conductances and that's multiplied by VC. Now what's connected at the other end of VC is for RP is minus GP VD and that's all equal to zero. Next we look at node C D at node D then we have node D is connected with GP plus GE times VD and at the other end connected at VD is minus VC GP And that's set equal to beta IB. Well, we note that IB, we'll put it in terms of node voltages. That's just beta multiplied by GP multiplied by VC minus VD. Putting everything on the other side, we have minus GP factored out and we have that beta VC here so that's 1 plus beta VC do the same thing for VD so that's GP 1 plus beta plus GE all that multiplied by VD that's equal to zero. So this is what we did uh, in terms of the node voltage analysis for node C and D and we basically almost did it by inspection. In our last equation it involves two unknown node voltages basically node VC and VD and includes the effects of the dependent source However, note that the symmetry is destroyed due to the dependent source constraint. So what this example shows, what this example shows is a general approach to writing node voltages for circuits with dependent sources. We start out treating the dependent source as if they were an independent source and then we write down the node equations for the resulting passive circuit using the inspection that we just used. This step produces a set of symmetrical node voltage equations with the independent and dependent source terms on the right hand side. However, when we then express the dependent source terms in terms of the unknown voltages and in this example it's C and D and move them to the left side of the equations with the other terms involving the unknown node voltages, then this step destroys the coefficient symmetry but leads to a set of node voltage equations that describe this active circuit. Okay, let's look at some examples. We'll let R1 equal to 1 kilo ohm 
R2 equal 3 kilo ohm, RB equals 100 kilo ohm, RE will be 3.3 kilo ohm, and that beta is equal to 50. Now when we substitute these values into these set of equations that we just did, we have the following. In those equations C and D, we have the following. So for this equation node C, we have 2.11 times 10 to the minus 3 VC minus 7.69 times 10 to the minus 4 VD is equal to 10 to the minus 3 VS1 plus 3.33 times 10 to the minus 4 VS2 minus 3.92 times 10 to the minus 2 VC plus 3.95 times 10 to the minus 2 VD is equal to 0. This is when we use both uh, node C to solve this uh, first equation. Finally we have VO is equal to VD in this example here and we note that when we use node D we have VC equals 1.008 VD after you substitute the values and then this finally yields the result that VO is a combination of VS1 and VS2 and this reminds us that this equation is linear since we don't have any nonlinear terms associated with this equation. We just see scalar multiples of VS1, this 0.736 VS1, and 0.245 VS2. These are the coefficients associated with VS1 and VS2, and that we note that VO is a linear combination of VS1 and VS2, which implies that this is a linear circuit. Again, when we did this example, when we put this dependent source on the other side of the equations, it destroyed the symmetry that's usually associated when we do this node voltage analysis. So when we have dependent sources, it destroys the symmetry of the equations that we have here when we do node voltage analysis.